are you standing? If you will turn your Bibles to the book of St. Matthew, chapter 11. down through verse 30. We'll read responsibly. If you found it, say amen. Amen. Verse 25, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me, of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son, but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest to your souls. My, my yoke, yoke is, is easy, and my, and my burden, burden is, light. is light. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we are so glad that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. We thank you, Lord God, that the things that you require of us do not grieve us. We thank you, Lord God, that the burden, O oh God, of the law, the burden of legalism can wear us down. The oppressions of our adversary can oppress us, but your yoke is easy and your burdens light. I ask today that you will lighten the load and the burdens of each and every one, Lord God, that is feeling oppression from the adversary of our God. I thank you, Lord, for the love that you have for your church. I thank you, Father. I ask now that there would be a confirmation of that love toward the body of Christ. Those that are listening by way of television, O oh God, and these that are here in our midst, let your power be released. Let your love be felt and your peace, the tranquility, oh God of the spirit of our God. Permeate, Lord God, the airways and the atmosphere. For your glory alone, we thank you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. As I was talking to God, he, first I should say that um, several days and weeks off and on, the Lord has been getting my attention as to his love and uh, how he loves his church, how he cares for his body and attempting to get us in line with um, that love. I want you to know that he cares for you, you individually and you collectively. God cares for us. He's a very caring and loving God. And um, we have not experienced a love like God's love. There is no match for that kind of love. He loves you with an everlasting love, an untiring, unwavering love. And the things that we pass through, he cares and he was saying to me, I want you to understand 
what I'm trying to say. Challenges we face and we wonder, Lord, what is going on? And so he said, don't, don't, don't worry about the devil. He said, just, just understand what I'm saying. And uh, so finally he began to kind of break through and help me to see the love that he has for his church, his body. It made me aware that the body of Christ is going through some challenges at this time. And God is a comforter, isn't that right? He's a comforter. And so he, uh, as I began to understand it a little more, and then I was before his presence in God, he said, the healing for the soul. And I began to look and try and listen and gather a little more of what he was sharing. So I, I, I went through the concordance and was looking at um, some of the references to the soul and the different or the states of the soul. And uh, I just kind of made a list. I didn't. It's not exhaustive, but I made a list and uh, listened to some of these conditions of the soul. I won't give a scripture for everyone. I have them here, but I won't give it. But uh, maybe for a few, the soul can be afflicted, abandoned, lonely, bitter. Job talks about it. He said his soul was bitter. The soul can be cast down, chastened, converted, destitute, distressed, faint, grieved. The soul can also be healed. The soul can be joyful. The soul can be in a longing state. Loads melted, refreshed, Restful, restored, satisfied, sorrowful, strengthened, thirsty, troubled, vexed, weary. The Bible talks about a liberal soul. And he said a merciful man does good to his own soul. The soul can be also famished. The Bible says whoever keeps his mouth keeps his soul from troubles. Knowledge can be pleasant to the soul. So he has a, an awful lot to talk about the soul. And, um, and when God said healing for the soul, you know, this, this message is quite familiar to you. You know, you, you've heard it preached, at least even by me, uh, more than one time over the years. But uh, I'm going to call your attention back to this passage here. And beginning from verse 25, he said, At that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. At this point, there's almost like a point of transition in Jesus' ministry, where he had his public ministry. Uh, he had ministered um, quite a bit. Most of his ministry at this point was public. And where the spiritual leaders, the scribes and Pharisees had rejected his ministry and his word on every hand. So now he's about to turn in a more personal way and privately. And uh, this is almost like a transition here. And as he would begin to contemplate, he says this. He answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them to babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. And I can't help but think to know and to understand that he was talking about the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the leaders of that day. Scribes were the copiers of the law. The Pharisees were the strictest doers of the law. Sadducees. Well, they were sad, you see. <laughs> Amen. So God uh, was talking about these religious leaders and they rejected him as the Messiah. 
They rejected God's plan of salvation. They didn't understand God's plan of salvation. They didn't understand who Jesus really was. They didn't understand. And because they didn't understand, of course, they rejected that which they were not comfortable with. Look at somebody say, it pays to be open. <laughs> Here's the thing that they had talked about in the history of Israel from the time of Moses, the prophet that was coming and all this, and he was right there in the midst and they did not understand that he was the one. And so as he began to turn more privately, he said, Father, uh, this is your wisdom. You know, you, the wise and prudent, you've hid these things concerning the overall plan of God's salvation, but you've revealed it to the common people, to those that recognized that they had a need indeed and they were open to the message of the gospel. And then verse 27 says, all things are delivered to me of my father and no man know the son but the father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Now listen to this. No one knows the Father the way the Son does. No one knows the Son the way the Father does. So although he was attempting to make known to the scribes and Pharisees, they did not know him and could not receive who he really was. And of course he said, Father, you hid these things from the wise and prudent. And so when he makes this statement, he says, no one knows the father but the son. Now think about this. No one knows God the Father. No, no, no one on earth knew about the Father the way that his son who dwelt in his presence from everlasting. No one knew him. So now here he was and he turned right around and vice versa. No one knows uh, the son like the father does. And here the son was standing in their midst and began to uh, attempt to make known the father to them who they thought they were worshiping, right? Attempted to make known the father to them, but they, they could not receive him. And then he turns around and says, but even so, father, it's, it seems good in your sight. And when he makes this statement, and he said also, no one knows except those unto whom the son will reveal the father. And then 28 says, look at this invitation. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All right, now you, you know that the uh, burdens that were put upon the people is spelled out in Matthew 23. I'm going to read just a little bit, Matthew 23. Matthew 23, verse 1, Then said Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not, after, do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be carried or borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. All right, so now there was the, 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 um, the way they interpreted the law and they put upon the people, the people basically could not do them. And they were burdened trying to fulfill the law. So Jesus comes along. Wants to reveal himself. 
He could have said, well, you know, I'm the person that the Bible talks about. I'm that person. I'm really that person. And so his invitation now is to those that would receive him. He said, come unto me, are you that labor and are heavy laden, you that are carrying such a load in your attempt to reach the Father or to serve or to please him. Come on to me and I will give you rest. I will give you relief. I will give you refreshing. And so picture now the burdens that they were under the load that they were carrying and many of them could not interpret the scriptures so they had to have uh, the leaders to interpret them for them. So they had to believe what they say, so to speak. And um, But God, uh, Jesus comes alone now and want to relieve people from oppressions. I dare say that we all go through challenges and there is an enemy of our soul that would love to have us filled with the do's and the don'ts and the oughts and the shoulds. Anybody, is that familiar with anybody? To try and cause our souls never to be satisfied, but to constantly be reaching and striving to get to a place that seems impossible. And so the Lord wants to bring relief and refreshing to the soul. Uh, and uh, so he says to me, healing for the soul. And as I was looking upon that, he says, come unto me, all ye that labor. One, one writer says labor has to do with the burden that we put upon ourselves and are heavy laden and the heavy laden are the burdens that others put on us. I, I don't know that to be true, but the point was fairly well taken. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me or learn from me. He says, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And I, you know, I get a chuckle out of this because what teacher can actually tell people that they're meek and lowly? The very fact that they feel that way about themselves disqualifies them. <laughs> Isn't that right? But here Jesus says, for I am meek and lowly at heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. You know, I, I, one day I was looking into that and I was thinking about how long-suffering Jesus is. You know, let me take you back to your elementary school or primary school. There were those that didn't get things as fast as the others. And, uh, you know, every now and then you run across one of those teachers that didn't have much tolerance. And I've heard others say the teacher would take and if they didn't get the addition right or whatever, they would paddle their hand. You know, they're frustrated because they couldn't get it. And so the child that's trying to get it, he's, now he's doubly intimidated because now he can't get it. And he's afraid he's going to get more from the teacher because he can't get it fast enough. But Jesus is saying here, I'm not that kind of teacher. Some people get it faster than others. Some people are more discerning. Some people are more insightful so they can grab it faster than the others. And then, but the teacher, the kind of teacher, he said, get to know me, learn of me, learn of my nature. Then he turned right around and said, for I am meek and lowly at heart. And you'll find rest to your soul. There's an adversary of our soul that will let, tell us God's tired of us. He's weary with us. He's frustrated with us because we haven't gotten by now. But Jesus says, learn from me. He said, my yoke is easy. My yoke is easy. Uh, that word easy here means useful, pleasant, good, comfortable. 
suitable, serviceable. The yoke was a crossbar used to harness two animals together in such a way that the maximum pulling power of each would be exerted. Jesus makes us fellow yoke, or yoke fellows or fellow workers with him. And when we get yoked up with him, the, yokes be, the, the load becomes easy because he's the stronger ox, right? And it's said that the, the ox, sometimes when they had a younger ox, they're breaking him in and everything, he would yoke him up to one that was stronger and uh, so that the heavier uh, weight would be upon the stronger ox. Jesus is the stronger ox. So when we get yoked up to him, he carries most of the load. And he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if I'm, if I'm weighted down with burdens, then Jesus wants to lighten my load, right? For his commands are not grievous. So he says, <clears throat> uh, the writer was saying the legalistic system was a severe burden. But service to Jesus is not chaff because it is well fitting and that yoke was a wooden bar and it was designed and trimmed in such a way to fit around the ox's neck and it had to be trimmed and fitted well because if it wasn't then when they're working and pulling the load after a while it could irritate the neck of the ox causing further frustration. So, Jesus said, my yoke is easy or well-fitting. It fits well so that you won't find that irritation when you're trying to do service for God. That irritation does not come from God, Right? Because he said, my yoke fits well, it's well fitting, and you'll find a refreshing, you'll find relief to your souls. Those burdens that you carry are not the things that God will put upon us. Hallelujah. I will give you refreshing. I'll give you really, I'll give your soul rest refreshing and that's what I believe what God wants to do for us uh, the Bible says in the book of uh, Acts and then had the churches rest um, walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost um, I believe God wants to revive our spirits I believe God wants to do something hallelujah to you and I hallelujah to relieve us of the oppression of the devil for the devil is a defeated foe and he comes um, as a master to destroy and interfere and heal to kill and to steal but God God said, I've come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. There is healing for the soul. David said, soul, why art thou cast down? Hope thou in God. David said on another occasion, Lord, heal my soul, for I'm sinned. The soul, and then he talks about his enemies, how they were oppressing and persecuting. But God is able, saints, and he loves us beyond what we love our own selves. And today is a special day for you. Today is a special day that God wants to touch your soul, touch your heart in such a way. Open your hearts unto him. I remember God talking to me uh, uh, and I was talking to the Lord about some receiving and some not. God says, won't you teach them how to receive? And so I'm going to interject this briefly a little bit. In receiving from God, the Bible says we must believe first that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So when you're seeking the Lord, one, you open your spirit for God to minister to you. Well, what hinders the openness? There's so many things that can hinder an open spirit before God. Pride is one of those things that, into, into, that can come in and says, 
No, you don't want people to be looking at you. You don't want people to notice about you. No, 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 no. And that can go on and on. And, and fear can come in because fear says, well, I don't, want, I don't know what might happen to me. I don't want to fall on the floor. I don't want to do this. I don't. And the list can go on with those things here. But it's simply standing in the way of the power of God flowing in there and setting captives free. Are you here with me today? For God said, he's like, don't you teach them how to be open to receive from God. Heard people say, there's no shame in my game. You don't have nothing to hide, isn't that right? But if there's a need, let God fill that need. God is able, hallelujah. God is not a nonchalant God. You know, God is a good God. God loves us with such a perfect love. And he's willing and he's ready, hallelujah, to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. God is with us today. God cares for us. Hallelujah. He cares for you and I. He's not strange. He's a good God, says. The devil paints the wrong picture about God. He said in so many occasions, one time he said, call upon me in a day of trouble and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. Isn't that right? That's what he says. Whosoever, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. The brother preached on yesterday at our minister's prayer breakfast, and I was listening to him. He says, sometimes we can be in the presence of God and not get anything. I was like, well, well Lord, why, why are you saying that? It was an attention getter. It's like the Lord says, I don't change. Isn't that right? I don't change. Open wide your heart. I always use my wife as an example. It doesn't matter where she goes. She's always getting something from God. And I used to say to the Lord, God, how is it that she's always, it doesn't matter. She is always so open to God. And God is always healing. Yesterday, she got a healing. <laughs> because her spirit is so open to God. She don't look to man. She's talking in her heart to God. And God is listening. Oh, it was a good lesson for me, you know. I tell you, I told about the story all the time. When I first got into faith there, I just thought I was, uh, you know, I had it going on. So my problem was I couldn't figure out why God didn't agree with me, you know. No sinner man, no drunk, he couldn't have it come in there. He come in there, he's getting help. I'm like, wait a minute, Lord, you, how you going to do this and bypass me? You know what he said? I didn't come to call the righteous. You're righteous in your eyes. I can't, I can't, I can't do nothing. I can't do nothing for you. I can't do nothing for you. I can't do nothing for you. I said, hey, what? <laughs> Ooh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. So I heard one man say, keep yourself at a point of need. Always feel the need for God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is so full of love. He's so, he so want to do something for you and I today. God is a great God. He's such a great God. I hope I can paint this picture right before him. For God loves you and I, saints. He loves us with a per perfect love. He was telling me about how the body is just really going through at this time. It's like he said, I want to make you sensitive to the needs of my people. People are hurting. And God is the answer. God is the solution. You know, I don't know about you, but, you know, I'm, I say I'm doing better than I've ever done in my life. But I can't get beside myself and forget humor and suffering. People are hurting. So it was good 
The psalmist says in Psalm 119, it was good that I had been afflicted so that I won't forget your law. Hallelujah. So God makes us sensitive to his perfect will. And my soul is crying out now to communicate this simple, simple word. He said, just come to me. No, no vain is the help of man. Come to me. Hallelujah. He said, the scribes and Pharisees, he said to the people, he said, they won't come to me that they would have life. Life is in his son. Life is in the Christ. Life is in the resurrected Jesus. Life is in the Christ. Life is in him. Life is in him. Life is in him. Hallelujah. One, one writer, one uh, uh, other, some of the translation says, come unto me all you toiling and burdened ones. All ye weary and overburdened. All you that are growing weary to the point of exhaustion. All those whose work is hard. All those who are worn and bowed beneath your load. I will give you rest. What do you mean? I'll give you a new life, peace, and serenity. I'll refresh you. I'll lead you. David said he leave me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, I'll refresh you. I'll lead you into rest. He said, I will ease you, my God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Take my yoke was a Jewish metaphor for metaphor for dis- discipline and discipleship. We talked about the yoke of the law, the yoke of the kingdom, the yoke, yoke this. So it was appropriate for Jesus to come and say, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Because somebody said, let's yoke up with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Healing for the soul. You know, I was looking at, you know, we got this, one of the Bibles, Peter's, what is it? Peter's one of this uh, Bible here, and, 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 and I read it sometime, and some things I don't necessarily want to, you know, I, I think it kind of, sometimes it seems like it goes a little bit too far in trying to interpret the word, but anyway, so I, I just kind of slightly, I said, I, I don't, I, I won't look into that. I, you know, I got all kind of translation, but this one, so I, I looked at that this morning, I said, well, you know what? I, 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 I don't want to have an attitude against it because I know these people have some truths in there and they've done a whole lot more studying than I have. So let me just look into it. Anyway, looked into there and he was uh, in that, reading that portion about uh, uh, Matthew 28. And uh, let me see what he said. He said, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come and I'll show you how to do it. And then he says, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I was like, oh. I said, oh, wow. And I kind of knew Jesus would do that. You know, if you have an attitude against something, sometimes God will just straighten you out. You know what I mean? (laughs) He's just something else. Think, why? Because he doesn't want us to have be added to him. Isn't that right? So I said, okay, God, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Come on, let's praise him anyhow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The unforced rhythm, rhythms of grace. By grace are you saved. Through faith. That. Not 
out of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works. As any man should boast. Hallelujah, Jesus. And of his fullness have we all received, says John the Baptist, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth. came by Jesus Christ. There's enough grace for you and I to last in eternity. There's enough grace. Grace upon grace. Grace for grace. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You cannot exhaust this grace. You cannot exhaust the, the mercy of God. You cannot exhaust the loving kindness of God. Hallelujah. Call upon him in a day of trouble and he said, I will answer you. And I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not. He's ready. He's willing. He's near you. He's in you. He's a right now friend. He'll help us now. If you're among those whose soul has been weary, if you're among those that the task has been very great, I remember there's so many junctions in my life where God would call my attention to the mercies of God and the grace. I remember God sent us on a sabbatical. And he said, I want you to take a month off from the ministry. I thought, God, what on earth will I do a month off? I don't want you to be doing any preaching. So I thought about it. While I was trying to figure out what in the world am I going to do for a month, I don't even know nothing else to do, you know. And uh, district superintendent from the Assemblies of God called me. Brother Herring said, um, Bob Roden, he said, uh, I called, he said, because uh, uh, your name came up as far as taking a sabbatical. And I got so excited. I said, oh, my God. I'm, you know, he, he, I'm talking to him. So they don't, they don't get into a whole lot of, you know, words of knowledge and wisdom, you know, kind of. They, they do. But it's very, it's different. So anyway, so I said, oh, God just spoke to me. <laughs> so he just was like, he just kind of bypassed what I was saying and say. <laughs> so, well, we were praying and he said, and um, your name came up to take a sabbatical. And the sabbatical program, he said, are you familiar with this? I said, oh, yeah. And he said, any pastor's been serving in a certain place for more than 10 years. You know, we try to give him sabbatical as, as a name comes up and your name came up. So the rest is, you know, those of you that know it, you heard it. So uh, God, but God spoke to me before and he, he put me on the Dix district presbyter's heart and said, that's the man I want to take off. He's, he's, he's weary under the load. He's, he's, he's been under it now and, 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 and he's being oppressed. And, and this thing that's supposed to be a joyful thing is no longer joyful. He's burdened and he's oppressed. His wife is oppressed. And he said, I want to I heal him. I want to refresh his soul. And so 
He sent us out. He sent us out west, Midwest. And as we were driving, we had not gotten too far beyond the state line. And God said, throw yourself on the mercies of God. I am your righteousness. And I began to sit up and say, God, what am I doing wrong? And the devil was trying to wear me out. But God rescued me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But God rescued me. My wife was so worn, and I didn't have a clue how much she was worn down. Got out there, and we went to a prayer conference. And so we were all gathered around the altar, and as we were praying, whammo, my wife fell out. Stayed out during the whole time of the prayer. And I, with my foolish self, God, why you put my wife out? You know, (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know how bad she was hurting. I didn't know. Merciful to me. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, I thank you, God. Thank you for your mercy. The amazing thing is the next night we went, same thing happened again. God so we left that place and the closing night of the prayer we were leaving and this lady old lady came to me she said son I saw a tall angel pouring oil on you she said God got a great work for you I don't know you But at the time, the word was fitting because I was so devastated. First, he told me, you're going out west and throw yourself on the mercy of God. Get there and then I didn't understand how bad my wife was suffering. The minister had some pain. I ain't going to say too much, y'all, because I just want you to... I see some say, oh yeah, is that all right? <laughs> Listen, you may look at the glory when people are up here ministering. You don't have a clue. Minister is much more, thank you, than standing up in front of people and proclaiming the goodness of God. All right, I'm going to leave that one alone too. And you know, God is good. That's my conclusion. God is good. He's been faithful. He's a great God. He's a great God. And he'll do you good. I hope today that God will minister his love to some heart today. He knows how to do it. I'm beyond this thing about trying to show. I don't have no need for that no more. But this great God that's been with me 40 plus years in ministry is the one that I'm attempting to tell you about his great love. 
He want to minister to you today. Will you let him minister to you? He said there's healing for the soul. The soul can be cast down. Weary. Longing and bitter. Abandoned and lonely. Thirsty. But the Bible makes it clear that Jesus satisfies every category, every state that the soul finds itself in. Jesus satisfies. Hallelujah. He said, I, this, this is what he said in one of, the, one of the prophets. He said, beside me, there is no savior. Before me, he says, there was no God formed. And he said, neither will there come another after me. I alone. Can we give him some glory? Well, <laughs> hallelujah. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The writer of Hebrews says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Father, I thank you right now. I give you glory. Reach your people today, O oh God, with your glorious presence. Heal the burdens, Lord. Break oppressions, Father. Let your people be reminded of your great love. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. No man cares for our soul. That's what the writer said. David said, no man cares for my soul. It's only God. Only the great Savior. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Move in this congregation, Lord. Move, oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. By your spirit, Lord. Thank you for reminding us today of your great love. There's healing for our souls.